hello. In honor of Thanksgiving uh, and Christmas, I suppose, I am going to make this video of how to make green bean casserole. So hopefully you can work on this sometime over the holidays when you're at home. So first I'm going to show you all the ingredients. We need green beans, of course, and you can use any kind of green beans. I have cut green beans. You can use French style green beans, whatever you want. You can even use fresh green beans if you cook them a little bit. Um, then you also need one can of cream of mushroom soup and you need some crispy fried onions uh, and you need some pepper and you need some milk. You can you need a pan to put it in. I'm using a I'm not sure what this is a nine five by nine or something like that. It's a square pan and I'm using a metal pan but you can use any kind of pan you want. Uh, it doesn't matter what material and I also have an eighth of a teaspoon, which would be the tiniest little measuring spoon you have, most likely. If you don't have a one-eighth, you can use a one-fourth and just try to fill it up about halfway. It's not crucial that you use exactly the, this amount, but this is the amount of pepper that I like to put in my green bean casserole. Okay, so what we do is, first of all, Let's see, I'll turn this back around. I think that might be easier. Okay, first thing we do is we open the green beans. I got green beans that have a pull tab, like a soda can. Um, so you have to get your finger under there. There's a little hole in it. Pull it up and you'll hear it make a noise. Then we pull it back. It's pretty easy to open. You wanna hear it snap off like that. And you want to be careful because the edges of this are really sharp, so you don't want to touch the edges. You want to just hold it by the little um, tab. All right, now we need to drain our green beans. So the way I do that is I just hold the top that I just took off. I push it down, not too hard. I just set it on top with my fingers. I turn the beans. Let me make sure you can see this. I just pour the liquid out. You can hear the liquid going out. And I just keep my fingers on this top so that the beans don't all fall out. If this is too hard, you can get a little strainer, like the kind of thing you strain pasta in, and you can dump the green beans in that, and that, that'll be an easy way to do it. But this is just a nice, easy way to do it. And I take my top, throw it in the trash, and I'm gonna put my beans in the pan. And you pretty much, they all fall out if you shake the can. Pretty easy to get that done. Next can of beans, doing the same thing. Opening, pull that top off. It makes a nice sound so you know you got it. You can feel it come loose. And then I'm going to hold it on the can. Drain out all the liquid. Next can of beans going in the pan. All right, throwing this in the trash now. Now we have worked on a tray before, so you could do that, and then you could just have all your trash and leave that until the end of this whole process. I got soup that also has the pull top, so it's very easy. Good practice for your fingers. It's a little harder to get it off. Sometimes you might have to wiggle a little, little bit to get the last bit of the top off of the can. There's my soup. Oh, you know what? We also need a spatula. I forgot about that. And you know what a spatula is, I think. There's the spatula. I'm going to turn my can over my pan. Make sure it's over. It doesn't really matter where, but the middle would be nice. Then you can distribute the soup from there, and you're going to stir all of this up so you don't have to try to spread the soup around. You can just dump it. And then I'm using the spatula because this soup is creamy and thick, cream of mushroom. So I am using the spatula to, to dig into the can and get all the soup out because we want all the good soup. And then to help me get all the good soup flavor out, I'm going to use this can to measure in my milk. All right? 
and if you're the cook, oh, you know what we didn't do? We did not wash our hands. I did wash my hands before I started doing this, but that is the first thing that you should do. So if you have not already done that and you have reached this portion of the video, yeah, then well. you need to... This is not for our kids. Oh. This is for my students. <laughs> Excuse him. Um, so I got all the soup out. And I don't even remember what I was talking about. Oh, if you, you should go wash your hands right now. And if you needed to feel in the can to make sure you got the soup out, you could do that. You want to be careful because there are sharp edges in a can, all right? So don't be sticking your hand down in there too much. I would suggest that you use the spatula. Okay, so we've got the beans, we've got the soup. Oops, I forgot. I told you I was going to put the milk in the can. So now I'm going to take my milk. I'm going to fill this can up about halfway, and you could use your finger to help you with this. I would say put your finger on the edge of the can, bend it, and just hold it in there. Don't squish it over to the side because that's how you would get cut. Don't move it around. Just hold. You can hold the can with your thumb and your finger inside of it bent over the edge, and then I'm just going to pour the milk. And when I feel it touch my finger, that's going to be the right amount of milk. All right. And if you put a little too much milk, it's not going to be that big of a deal. The reason you're putting milk in this is just to have some liquid to absorb so that your beans don't get all dried out, okay, and that it stays nice and creamy. I'm not going to pour the milk in yet. That's the last step for me. I'm going to put a little bit of onions in here. So you can use onions. You don't have to measure the onions. You can just use as many onions as you like because that makes it really good. Now I opened the top of this. It's got a little pull-off plastic cap. Then it's got this metal, like a little tin foil thing. Feel around on the edges and get it loosened up. Feel for a place that you can pull and maybe get it started. And I would, I would start pulling around it. I would go ahead and put my thumb and my finger together, start to pull this up in a, more than just one corner because that way it'll make it easier if you get all of it to get all of it off. All right. So, and I pulled most of it off. I can stick my hand in there and feel where the onions are. And I would just pull out maybe a handful or two of onions because we just want to have some in the middle of the casserole. We don't want to have, you know, want to use all this whole container. This is a six ounce container of onions. This also comes in a half size. You would use the entire half size, but for this screaming casserole, I don't really need to use this entire container of onions, but you can, it's up to you. All right, I am gonna use my spatula and I'm just gonna stir this around and you can feel the, uh, the soup moving around, it's thick. That's why I'm not putting the milk in yet because I want to be able to feel what I'm doing here with my spatula. Now I'm going to go around, my pan is a square. I'm going to go around into each corner and push things into the middle and then push them back out to the edge to feel like I've gotten uh, the soup coated on all of the beans. All right, you can hear it, it makes noise makes kind of a smacking sound. <laughs> and then you can use your spatula to kind of pat around the top of it. And you can kind of feel, oh, I've got a lot of beans over here on the left maybe, and then I need to move them to the right. So you can just kind of feel if it's evenly distributed in the pan. All right, now I'm gonna add my pepper. All right, so I'm gonna take my little tiny, tiny, one-eighth of a teaspoon, and I'm gonna find the, the pepper open, the open, the place to open the pepper where I can stick this in there and scoop out pepper, and I'm gonna pull it out, and you can either just pull it straight out, and then you can hold it over the sink, and you can take your finger and just brush over the top of it. We've done this before to make sure that you don't have a big, um, you know, over, over scoop of pepper there. All right. And like I said, it doesn't matter if there's exactly the right amount of pepper in this recipe. It's not going to make it or break it. 
All right, I'm gonna add, actually, I'm, I scraped that off a little bit too much, so. I'm gonna try that again. I'm gonna keep my finger more flat. There we go. So very lightly brush it off, or you might dump off more of the pepper, and it really does taste good if it's got a lot of pepper in it. All right, let me move my pepper so you can see what I'm doing. And now I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna hold my pan with one hand, and I'm gonna sprinkle my pepper around in it. Again, it's, you're gonna mix it all up again anyway, but you can just try to get it distributed around. All right, now I'm gonna, I think I will put my milk in now. So I take my milk and I like to kind of see how much milk is in there. This should be a perfect amount, but we'll pour, I'm gonna pour about half of it because I don't want it to have too much milk in it. And then I'm gonna kind of mix it up just like I did the first time with the soup. I'm just going around the corners and down the side and back into the middle and moving it around. Okay, and it feels, you can feel the consistency of it. It still feels about the same as it did when I first put the soup in. So I'm gonna put a little bit more milk. Okay, and now I'm gonna keep stirring. And the milk is another thing that it doesn't matter if you have exactly the right amount of milk. It's not going to ruin the recipe. As long as you have some milk in there, <clears throat> then you're gonna be good. And I think that was pretty good. I'm gonna leave it at that. So I used I used about two thirds of the milk that I put in there. So maybe we would say, if you want to measure, let's say you would do a half a cup of milk <clears throat> and that would be a safe bet that that would be the right amount of milk for this. All right, I'm tapping the top with my spatula and I'm feeling, you can kind of hear it, listen. You can hear it kind of going, like liquid, a liquid sound, so you can tell that there's a good, you know, a decent amount of liquid in there. All right, I'm just gonna tap my spatula on top and make sure I got all the yummy mushroom soup off of it. And I'm finished with that. I'm gonna put my top on the onions because I don't need them again until the casserole is almost finished cooking, all right? So I'm gonna put those aside. I've got my pan, it's full of green beans and milk and soup and onions and pepper. Oh, and I'm gonna do one more thing because you know I like salt on things, so I'm taking my salt and I'm just gonna sprinkle it over the top. The green beans already had salt, so you don't even have to do that, but that's what I like to do because I'm from Georgia and we like salt. So that's that. The next thing I'm gonna do is cook this. So what you do when you cook it is you turn the oven on to 350 bake and once it heats up, you can put this in. And I'm not gonna cook it right now because I have some other stuff in the oven right now. And this will be the last thing I cook because it doesn't take that long because really the things that are in here are cooked already. So if I ate this right now, it would be fine because there's nothing raw in it. But I want it to be warm, so I'm gonna cook it. So I'll put it in the oven at 350 um, for probably like 20 to 30 minutes. And so what you wanna do is you wanna check on it. And you just wanna, um, you might have to have somebody help you with this if you can't hear it bubbling, but it should be a little bubbly. And then you'll take it out um, with your hot, your little, um, I forgot what we call these things, <laughs> oven mitt, oven mitt. Um, with your oven mitts, you'll take it out and you will um, sprinkle onions over the top of it. And you, what you can do with that is you can just take, I would take handfuls and I would take handful put it on the left corner and kind of systematically go over the top of this um, with the onions so that you know that you've got some onions all over the top and again you don't have to measure them it's not gonna matter if you put if you put too many nobody's gonna complain because everybody likes these if you don't like them that much then don't put a ton of them just put a little bit um, so I won't you won't see me do that part but that would be pretty easy for you to do if you just take some onions in your hand Sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. And I would use my hand so you could tell 
how much you've got on there. And then you can even pat over the top of it and feel that you've got onions all over. All right, so that's how you do the onions. And those you would just, like I said, after this is baked for about 25 to 30 minutes, pull it out, or I said 20 to 30, but I, I would say I like it, you know, very bubbly. So I would just um, say 30 minutes is probably gonna be fine, but take it out maybe 25 minutes Put your onions on top and then cook it for five to ten more minutes and you can smell when it's done you'll be able to smell that the onions are smelling really good and crunchy and then you put your oven mitts back on take it out and enjoy it and that's the end so um, today is actually thanksgiving so i'm going to say happy thanksgiving even though when you see this it'll be later than thanksgiving uh, but i hope your family had a great time together and hope to see you soon bye